Then finally, this recording, it, it, sorry, the webinar is being recorded and will be a link will be sent out to you after so that you can get a copy of it. All right, we might uh, kick off. Okay. Now, normally in a workshop, we'd get everyone to introduce themselves. However, given the webinar format and the numbers involved, that just isn't practical. So I'll introduce myself and then you can select whichever of these mini figures you feel best represents you or one of your interests. So my name's James Dwyer and I'm one of the two Lego Education Certified Teacher Trainers at Modern Teaching Aids. And the other teacher trainer is Joanna Burke, who normally um, travels around and runs workshops in New Zealand. Some of you have hopefully met her before. And um, unfortunately, she couldn't make it today. But on the chat function, we've got Chris Todd, who's a uh, certified Kiwi. He currently lives in, um, in, on the Sunshine Coast in Queensland, and he's the school rep for Canterbury. And we've also got Hope Brewer on there, who live, lives in New Zealand, is a local, and one of the, the, the reps over there. So she'll be able to help you with any questions you may have as well. Okay. So... To give you an idea of what we'll be covering in today's webinar, we're going to be showing, um, showing the Spike Prime kit itself, some of the sensors and the, the programmable hub. We'll be going through that. I'll just demonstrate it. Um, we'll also do a review of the software, and that'll involve exploring some of the unit plans and having a look at, at just the layout of the software, that sort of thing. Um, we'll also do a demonstration of one in particular, which is Super Cleanup and we'll demonstrate the Scratch-based programming that's involved. So it's um, hopefully a lot of you are familiar with Scratch and um, it's, a, it's a nice addition to, um, to the Lego programming um, product family, if you like. And we'll review some of the online support materials that are available as well. And then we'll have, a, as I said, we'll have a Q&A session at the end. And um, as a, you can bring that up using Alt-H. You just press those two keys at the same time and it brings that up. Okay, so um, Spike Prime is a really great addition to the Lego product family and it's targeted around years five to eight, so at the end of primary and into the early years high school. So from the ground up, it's really been designed with Lego's core philosophy in mind that play is essential to learning and building confidence. Spike Prime fits in between the We Do 2.0 and the EV3. So previously, um, you would have used, say, the, the We Do would sit around grades three and four, and then you would introduce EV3, and that would go five to 12. And some people found the EV3 a little bit uh, intimidating or um, that sort of thing. And the Spike Prime is this new introduction of a product. Lego sort of heard that in the market and have placed this, and it's really based around this idea of developing confidence, the, the student's confidence. So for it's targeted at both boys and girls. You can see that in the color palette, that sort of thing, and some of the activities, and we'll get into that in a moment. Now, that philosophy that play is essential for learning and building confidence, that's based in Seymour Papert's theory of constructionism, which is the idea that children learn best when they're actively engaged in constructing something that has a personal meaning to them, whether it's a poem, a robot, a sandcastle or a computer program. Now, as teachers, we all know it's optimal to have students engaged in that sort of hands-on and playful activities. So now the Lego Foundation has done some research on this and they've sort of come up with the five characteristics of, of, of play which make it a valuable learning experience. And they are the things like, it has to be joyful. Okay, if the students, uh, are, 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 if their learning is joyful, they're indulging their curiosity, they're intrinsically motivated, and they'll take ownership and initiative in their learning. And we all know that from running classes where at, at the end of it, and, and I have it running, you know, when I run classes with students and also with teachers where I'm running workshops, and it's, it's lunchtime or it's recess and you've actually got to kick them out of the classroom. You know, they want to stay there. They want to keep going. They're really engaged in that project. And that's the sort of joyful, happy learning that, that the students, you know, we want to encourage the students to experience. Um, we want it, it has to be meaningful for them and, the, and the, that sort of actively engaged. 
it has to be iterative where they're going back over their their um their task that they're trying to achieve and they have have problems and they think through solutions and they try alternative solutions and hopefully eventually come up with something that's a continuous improvement and the other thing is we want it to be socially interactive as well and with that in mind lego um, encourage the ideal sort of ratio if you like is to have one kit between two children okay so or two students so that they're both able to learn and encourage each other you know one will have ideas and they can feed off that sort of that synergy if you like of um, of learning and ideas and improvement and um, you know one child on their own can, can get a bit frustrated at times and, and not quite know where to go two children together works really well for that sort of bubbling of good ideas to the surface and then the you can if you, you can, some people try to run them with more kids to the kids and that can work but it can start as you start to increase the number of kids to four that sort of thing you tend to find that there's one of the kids they're just they're not getting access to the the um the the computer or to the building process and so you really want to try and keep that ratio around one to two so one kit between two kids all right now the next bit is the the concept behind spike prime as i alluded to earlier it's about building student confidence and teaching stem with lego education so it's it from the very ground up it was designed with that in mind and what we might do now is jump into there's obviously the hardware aspect of the product and there's the software aspect and we might just jump into the hardware first and then we'll come back and have a look at the the spike prime app so the i, I guess the most important parts are things like the hub and the things and we'll jump into that now and i'll um bring up I'll just swap it back. Okay, so you can see here, I've got the, the hub, the hub here at the moment. So you can see, we'll have a look at it. This is the programmable hub. You program it, you can either use Bluetooth or you can, there's a little micro USB cable that you can connect to the computer. And that's where we can push our programs through into the brick. The, it uses a standard micro USB um, connection which any sort of your Android devices, lots of other computer peripherals, most people would have a micro USB cable in their house. Um, now you'll see, so, and it's really great that they've gone for a standard cable as well, which rather than some proprietary thing. The other thing you'll notice along this is, is just the shape of it itself. It's a, it's a rectangular build and it's really easy to connect. It's got lots of points of contact for the, the Lego pins and beams. To connect to and so it makes it a really easy brick to build with it's got a little speaker down the bottom there and it's also got six ports on it which um and for those who are familiar with the eb3 it's no longer divided there are sensor ports and motor ports you can use any you can plug a sensor or a motor into any of these ports which is which is a great um initiative as well and so you can, in theory, connect up to, well, you can connect up to six motors into a hub if you wanted to, or you can connect up six sensors into the hub or any combination in between. Now, the other thing is it's using a rechargeable battery. So it's a move away. You can't put um, double A's into it, which is great environmentally. I think that's a great thing. And so that just plugs into the back of it. And to charge it, you've got to connect it up via that uh, micro USB. So if while you're programming, you've got a cable connected to your computer, then it will be charging the battery at the same time, which reduces the amount of recharging that teachers need to do in, in the classroom. Okay, so the hub itself, you come along, you can turn it on. Okay, you can see I just held down that button. It's got two buttons on the side, which allow you to swap between various programs. And what we might do is I'll jump into the software itself now. So I'll bring that up. So, okay, so the reason I bring that up is we'll just try and get a connection at the moment. So you can see here, this is the software here and you can see it's just a, a blank screen. 
On the side here, we've got all these blocks that we can drag out. And you can see I'm looking at the full palette. So there's lots and lots of different blocks you can jump through. There's blocks that relate to motors or movement where you paired a couple of motors, um, lights, things where you're displaying things on the screen, sounds and events. And we'll jump into that in a little bit. But first of all, I just wanted to take you through this particular, um, this particular brick. So if I try to connect it up, so I come up here to connect and go to Bluetooth. And if I press the Bluetooth button up top there, you can see it. I'll select connect. And if it connects, it'll come up here on the screen with a, a B for the Bluetooth, the sort of universal Bluetooth symbol. And you can see it did there. Okay, and now we've got a connection to it. So I'll just close this. Okay, so at the moment, what we might do is um, it's asking for an update. So I'm going to use the cable instead. I had tested earlier, but uh, it's asking for an update at the moment. And what we'll try and do is just connect it up via the cable, which will be easier. Okay, so you can see now, as I've put the cable in, it's come up here on the side there. It, it disappeared, but it said that the, the hub was connected. And you can see there we've got, um, this has gone green here. So I can now click on it. And the nice thing about this particular hub is it's also a sensor. It has a, a accelerometer in it, okay? Which means that we can tell, it can tell what, which way it's being moved or turned. So you can see up here, I've got your pitch and roll. For those who are familiar with drones, they'll be familiar with what that means in terms of as you turn it, tilt it, or turn it sideways or rotate it, you can get feedback about that. Now, don't worry if you find that confusing. It's something that you can play around with and experiment, but you can see as I turn this, the yaw is increasing. If I go the other way, it goes into a positive reading, okay? But if you're, fine, if you're familiar with that, that should be fine. If you're not, you can go into and use, it's a simpler way you can use it with this orientation, where you click on that and suddenly it's giving you an indication of which side is up. Okay, at the moment, the left side is up. If I turn it the other way, the right side is up. If I turn it vertically, the top is up. And you can see it's changing here on the screen as I do it the bottom or the back. And you can use that for, um, you can use that for, um, uh, with, with the um, feedback in the program to, to get it to do certain things. All right, so the other thing in here is in the brick itself, when you're connected, you can see what, what programs uh, have been placed in what slots. There are, you can put 20 different programs into this particular brick, okay? And you can see there it's, it's in slot zero down to 19, okay? And you can see I've got three programs in it at the moment called project five, three, and four, okay? In different slots. And you can see when they've been loaded into this particular brick as well and how much space they take up. And here you can delete them quickly if you want to as well. And so, also up here, you can rename the hub. So if you're Bluetooth connecting, if the students are Bluetooth connecting 10 different devices, you wanna make sure they're all named. And you can see I've come up here and named it MTA-10, for example, BT. And so you could MTA-11, MTA-4, those sort of things, which makes it much easier for the students to connect via Bluetooth. Okay, so if I come back here, okay, now, I'll introduce the sensors as well, okay? So we've now got this particular sensor, which is the distance sensor, quite similar to the ultrasonic sensor. I'll just attach it to the brick dynamically and you can see, okay? So you can see it now popped up here that the distance sensor is connected to port B. If I swap it out, and connect it to the port below it, it's telling me it's connected to port D. Now there's no, it's not getting a reading for 200 centimetres. If I bring my hand in closer to it, you can see we're now getting a live sensor feedback about how close 
it is to objects. So you can use that sort of sensor to tell, you know, if you're driving a robot along and you want to know how far away it is from the wall or an object, that sort of thing. And um, these sensors appear in all sorts of things like um, ultrasonic sensors appear, you know, in cars when you're reversing and you're getting that beeping signal indicating how far away you are from objects. They'll appear in um, automatic hand sanitizers. As you see, you put your hands underneath and it automatically, um, you know, gives you a, um, you know, a, an amount of the, um, the sanitizer, that sort of thing. Um, doors that automatically open use all these sort of sensors. And we can use that or students can use that in their projects to, um, you, to, to, you know, to simulate those sort of things. Okay, so that's the ultrasonic sensor. We jump in and I'll connect up the, what, the, the force sensor, okay? And the force sensor, so I'll just put the ultrasonic sensor down. And now the force sensor, okay, if I connect that up, you can see this is very similar to the previous, um, the touch sensor in design. It's, you know, it'll give you a feedback of on or off, if, if it's pressed or not. But what it'll also do is how many newtons of force are applied. So you can see as I apply more pressure, okay, you can see it's now at three newtons. Okay, if I increase that pressure, and it goes up to a maximum of 10 newtons of force. So you can use that to control and get feedback beyond just whether something is on or off, or true or false, you can work at how much force is applied. And so that's a, a, a great addition to the, um, the sensor, the Lego sensor family. So the next sensor that I'd like to connect up, okay, is the light sensor, so, or color sensor. So you can see here, I'll just attach it on, okay, and I've just connected it there to the hub to hold, okay. And you can see, as I come and put things, at the moment, it's giving us a, a, um, a reading of negative one, meaning that there is no colour in front of it. If I hold this little red brick up in front of it, you'll see it gives a reading of nine and turns to red, indicating that it, it can differentiate between colours. So I'll put that down, grab a blue brick, put that in front of it, and you can see it's giving me a, a numeric representation of uh, or three representing blue, and you can see it's putting the colour blue there as well. I'll grab a different brick. So we've got green as well. So you can put these sort of colors. Now it works best with Lego, um, Lego colors and Lego bricks for that sort of recognition, but it means we can also use that to program different behaviors, if you like. And I'll show you in a moment, a, a quick little example of that. So the next thing I wanted to show you as well are the motors. So we've got these, these motors, okay you get two of these sort of medium motors and one large motor in the kit okay so these motors have a built-in encoder inside them so i'll just plug this one in at the moment okay connect it up to any port and you can see it'll automatically appear up here at the moment it, they've got encoders inside them which can tell where the, um, the, the rotation is located. So you can see it's just gone through and you can see that's that zero, if you like, for the motor. And as I turn it, if I go the other way, you can see it going round to 180 down the bottom, up to 270 here, and then back to 360, and then over, clicks over back to zero, and then follows through. Now that is really useful information for a robot, you can work out how far you've driven. Depending on the size, there's all sorts of maths related activities you can do. Depending on the size of the, um, the wheel that you attached and you know, using your calculations for circumference of a circle, that sort of thing, you can do all sorts of um, you know, calculations where students can work out where their robot is within a course or you know, if they're trying to navigate through a maze, that sort of thing, or just travel a particular distance. There's a lot of maths activities which really help um, you know, make a concrete examples, if you like, of that formula, you know, 2 pi r, to um, calculate the, the, the distance of a, you know, the circumference of a circle, that sort of thing. Okay, now, 
that so not only I suppose are the motors something that can do something, but they're also something another sort of sensor that gives you feedback. So there's lots of different ways you can um, get information back about the world around the robot in order to determine what it does. Now the programming itself, I'll jump in here and sh just show you a quick activity which utilizes these um, the, the 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 motors and the and the um, one of the sensors. So I'll unplug for the moment the pressure, the force sensor, okay? And we'll jump in and I'll show you a little bit of coding and this is um, the, the, the scratch-based coding that it does. So we start off with these events, okay? So these are, we, we're going to end up with stacks of code. So it goes um, from top to bottom. And we, here we've got these events which are triggered when certain things happen. In this case, as soon as the program starts, we get this when the program starts hat. And I can put things underneath that event. And it might be, we'll get it to take the shortest path. So I'll drag that out. Okay. And you can see it's already, it knows that there's a motor connected to E. And so it drags it out and automatically formats which motor it's connected to. If, if I had a motor connected to a different one and I wanted to use it, you can see you can come down here and you can tell it which port you want it connected to and it's got here and it tells me that it knows that there's a color sensor connected to port D as well. And so we now want the port connected to port, the, the motor connected to port E, and we want it to take the shortest path to position zero. So if I quickly just run that program, you'll see, okay, and position zero is up here. If I wanted to get it to automatically to position so say 90, I can either type that in, okay? No matter where it is, so I'll stop that program. I'll come back, no matter where it is, okay? It'll take the shortest path to 90, or you could set it to go in a clockwise direction. You've got those sort of options, clockwise, anti-clockwise. But it'll do the smart thing and take the shortest path to position 90. So all of a sudden, there it is. So that's when the program starts, that's where I want it to be, okay? So the next thing we want, we want to incorporate this color sensor into it. And so we go down here to events. We go here when the color sensor connected to port D sees red. And when the, we'll, do, we'll grab a, oh, we'll do that one. Okay, when, it's, when the color sensor connected to port D sees red, we want it to, we're going to display something on the screen. So you can see here, we've got a five by five matrix to, play with, okay? And I want it to display, see there's a smiley face. Instead, I want it to display red. So we'll go down here, we'll just have a go at spelling out red. Okay, so that will display red on the screen for me, okay? And I also want it to play a sound so I know that it's um, here. So we can come in, we'll come in, we'll grab this, little cat meow, okay? And then I want the motor so we can see something as well. We want the motor, I want the motor to turn for when you can do it for a rotation. I'm gonna change it to degrees, okay? And I want it to move more than 90 degrees. I want it to change 180 degrees, okay? And then we could quickly duplicate this, okay? So I've just, to do that, I, I right clicked, okay? And then we're gonna have it something when it's blue, we want it to do something different. We'll get it, instead of displaying R, we'll get it to display B. Oh, we can just quickly do that. Oh. Sorry, we'll go with that for B. And we can pick a different sound rather than the cat meow. We can come back here and get this basketball bounce. Okay. And you just select that and tick it. So there's a whole range of different sounds in there. And you can see as I hover over them, that sound should come through. Okay. So I've picked the basketball bounce, clicked on that. You can edit them. There's a whole bunch of things you can do in there. So I'll change it now. It's one of those things that's selectable. So it's a, a sound is available there. 
And instead of turning it in a clockwise direction for 180 degrees, I want it to go anti-clockwise. And I'll do this one for 90 degrees so we can clearly see a difference. So when I run this program, so I'll stop it. And as soon as I start the program, this particular stack will be activated. And it is, okay? And then I'll pick up a blue block and it should activate the stack on the right. Okay, and it does. You can see the basketball bounce sound and it moves 90 degrees. Okay, if I pick up the red block or a green block, okay, it does nothing. It doesn't detect it. If I pick up the, uh, which one, have I the red, and you get a cat meow. Okay, and you can see it's just well aware of the well aware of, of, of the, um, the colour that's waved in front of the, um, the colour sensor. Okay, so that's a little bit of really simple introduction to the Scratch-based programming, how it works, how you can connect up the sensors and load up your programs. Okay, now I might jump into the, the, the more generally the software and um, we can come back for any questions you might have about the sensors or motors or, or, or that sort of thing in a moment. But what we'll do is have, a, have an explore here. This is the Spike Prime app. This is where you'd come right at the beginning, okay? It loads up, that sort of thing. And you navigate across, there's five tabs at the, at the top. There's this home, start, units, build, and my projects. So here at the, the, the starting screen at home, you've got any recent projects you've worked on. And you can see here, this is this project I started project five a minute ago. I haven't named it correctly, that sort of thing. Then we've got unit plans here that we can go into and some building, a library of building instructions, okay? The way I generally navigate around here is to go to these, through these tabs at the top. So if you jump to start, and here is the, when, when the kits first arrive, these are the first sort of activities that you'd look at doing. So in here, you could come in and there's a unit of work there. You start this up, and it starts giving you a guide through here. And it's, it's, it's highlighting where you've got to click, that sort of thing. So that's how we would navigate through it. I'll go into, and, and we won't do that at the moment. I've sort of shown you something a bit like that. But if I'm going back to the home page, okay. So as I said, in here at start, you'd go into that activity first and that gets you a, you know, to check that the hub works, that sort of thing. Then you'd go through this activity here with the students where you have a look at the different motors and sensors and plug, the, you know, plug them in and connect them up. And, um, and start making them interact, a bit like I did a moment ago. And there's, there's a great little activity, and I'll show you a video of, of this being done in a workshop with a, a bunch of teachers after, um, and it's make it move. And that's a real uh, engineering sort of task, and it's a really iterative project where the kids are going back and working out how to make a, um, a little robot move without using wheels. So it's a great, fun little activity, and you'll see that after. Okay, so then we've got the unit plans here, and I'll come back to that in a moment. I'll just show you the rest of the program and then we'll come back. And this is sort of the core of the software, if you like. So if we jump to build, so here is a list of all the different um, building um, instructions that are available in the software, okay? So you can come back here and find different things. And for some people, they might want their students to, to, to rather than follow the, the units, they might just want the students to build something and work out how to program themselves. The units are there with a, a really guided sort of learning experience for the students and a lot of assistance. Some teachers may prefer to have the, the students sort of build the thing themselves and work out how to program it themselves. So, and that, that's up to you as a, as a teacher, how you choose to go. Now over here, the last tab, my projects, this is where all the, my previous projects are. So I can come in here and um, you know, if they're named correctly, so you can see here, super clean up, um, we've got down accelerometer, some, some experiments I've done there, that sort of thing. Then you can come in here and edit projects and it allows you to select different projects that you might want to delete, that sort of thing. So you just highlight them and you can just come down here and delete or you can duplicate projects, that sort of thing, if you want to experiment you know, down different paths, if you like, for, for, for variations, that sort of thing. Okay, so here's where you can find all your previous projects that the students have created. So now if we jump back to units themselves, I'll just, okay. So here in, um, it, they've, they've essentially broken them up into Invention Squad, Kickstarter Business, Life Hacks, and Competition Ready, okay? So 
Invention Squad, and we'll jump into it in a moment, but Invention Squad really focuses on um, applying the engineering and design process. It's about creating builds and it really gets into the engineering aspect, I suppose, in STEM, which is the, one of the more neglected uh, acronyms, if you, if you like. The, the E in STEM or STEAM stands for engineering, and it's one of the hardest ones to do in the classroom. And, and Lego put a lot of thought into it and um, done a really good job with lots of projects about enhancing the students' understanding of engineering and building contraptions and that sort of thing. Then we've got Pix Business here in pink, which is all about developing computational thinking skills. So lots of the idea behind it is to um is to okay I'm, I'm getting some feedback that there's some issue with the audio. I'm sorry about that. I'm not sure how to fix it. It's totally silent here, but um anyway we'll, we'll try and um we'll persist on anyway. But um with the yeah Kickstarter business, there's the um yeah it's all about that sort of entrepreneurial experience. And I'll just jump into that, okay. And the idea being you can see all these sort of lessons where it's all broken up. And um, the idea is it's a bit like starting a, a business, that sort of thing, or entrepreneurial ideas about how businesses work, that sort of thing, and, um, and using computers and programs to, to enhance that. And so you can see here, if you have a look at the lessons, we'll, we'll jump into one in a moment in particular, but you can see you've got a little sort of picture there of what it is that they'll be building. You've got a little, the name here, a, a short explanation. And then you've got over here, if you want to jump into it, you just click there. And it gives you a guide here of how long these units, will units of work will take. So this one, for example, here is about 30 to 45 minutes. So that's from go to woe. That's pulling the kits out, getting kids to build it, programming it, and doing the base activity that, or, or the base work that's in that particular unit. Obviously, there's room for you to expand it out. There's, you can spend um, that amount of time or a lot more time depending on what you're trying to achieve with the students. So, but you can see here, the lessons get more and more elaborate as you go on. So they start here at 30, 45 minutes. There's a couple of those. Then you move to a lesson here, track your parcels, which takes 90 to 120 minutes, okay? And it's, it's up to you to determine you know, how long. Some people will spend a lot longer than that because they can just see, you can, you can see how to extend it out, if you like. Okay, the next one is, um, and, and it goes down to these sort of activities, much more complex, where it's, up, it's two hours plus there at the bottom there in automated. Okay, so if I jump back into the units, and you can come down here, we've got life hacks as well, which is all about programming with variables and dealing with data. So come down here, again, we've got the same format here, it gives you an indication of the lessons, um, and it drops down. So we've got ones which are, you know, this um, rain, hail or shine is about going out to the, to the cloud, if you like, and getting weather, weather um, predictions, that sort of thing, and modifying the behavior of the robot based on that. We've got all sorts of little activities in there that um, can be done as well. Okay, and as you see, they get longer and longer lessons or more complex or build on each other as, as you progress through those units. So if we jump back again, that's life hacks. And then we've got competition ready, which is about applying the engineering design process through a robotics challenge. So it's about preparing students for the sorts of robotics competitions that are out there. There's things like the RoboCup Junior, the first Lego League, and various other competitions that are starting up around the place. And um, you know, if the kids are, 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 aim, are, are interested in, in getting involved in those, then this is a great sort of bunch of units to, to work through to get them how to understand how to use the sensors to, you know, you can see that third one there, training camp three, reacting to lines. So it's about using that color sensor to work out when it's driving over a line or to follow a line, to read the, um, you know, get feedback from the sensors and react to it. Okay, so if that's the units there, we'll jump into this first one that I, I jumped over, Invention Squad. And I'll come back, there's a little video there, but I'll play you a different one in a moment. But um, so you've got uh, help, um, hopper race, super cleanup, and we'll jump into super cleanup in a moment, and I'll show you a fully fledged unit in, in that sense. But you've also got this one broken and designed for people, and super cleanup sort of leads into this one designed for people, which is about um, creating something that will assist in theory someone, you know, perhaps a handicapped person, that sort of thing. Um, now the other one with super cleaner, okay. If we jump into that, or, or just before we do, this one broken, I, I particularly like as a, a from my experience as a teacher. Often you'd have kids would build, would, would try to build some robot to serve some purpose. And they'd come up after, you know, at, at, towards the end of the lesson and they'd say, sir, it doesn't work. Can you fix it? And, you know, all this sort of obligation some, for some reason on me that I should be fixing their robot. And this activity of broken, I think, is a really good one. It doesn't work. If, if they built it correctly, it doesn't work. And they, and they understand that at the beginning. It's made very clear. And then they have to work out how to fix it, whether that's fix it using the software or, fix, you know, or engineering fixes. There's about four or five different um, uh, obvious problems that they can fix and it will get them into that idea where they have to improve upon things and, and they might be able to make it better than it was originally planned, that sort of thing. So I think that's a really good activity and I like the, the, idea, the, the ideas behind it, if you like. Okay, so if we have a look at Super Cleaner, okay, you can see here you can expand it out and get more, okay, and it tells you here what's required, you know, things you might need to use for this particular lesson. It tells you the, who it's aimed at, so it's aimed at beginners and at Key Stage 3. So if you jump in here at the, um, you can play the video, so I'll just play that.
sorry, I just checked that and found out that the sound wasn't playing. So I'll just play it again. Uh, please, well, I'll play it in the next section of the video, of the section of uh, hopefully fix that. So we'll just jump into the unit itself. So you come in here, okay? And you can see again, we've got this palette and you can see here, sorry. So you can see here, all of a sudden we've got a lot less of those blocks on the side, okay? It, what it means is, so Lego, it, when you jump into these units, they've stripped out a lot of the stuff that starts to confuse students. So you can see here, we're just, in this case, we're just dealing with these couple of events when the program starts and when the, the, um, the pressure sensor is pressed, and we've got a few motor movement blocks that we can use as well. So you come in here and this is, we've got this the sort of guide, if you like, happens over here on the right, and you can see we're at step one out of eight slides. So if we play that video again, hopefully that this time the sound will work. Sorry, my apologies if that was um, a bit loud or crackly, but um, I think it's just the, the issue of the, the internet. Um, okay, so what we've got here is, um, yep, we're, we're, we're dealing with one of eight. So you can come through and it starts off and we'll go into the, um, the some, some of the support materials that are behind this as well on the internet. But um, now, and it starts off with this idea, Lego follow a 5E philosophy where um, there's engage and, and we'll go through it in a moment, but this would be the first step in the 5e where um, We're trying to engage the students. So they start off with these sort of questions to to challenge them Did you see any rubbish on your way to school today? Wouldn't it be great to organize a day of tidying up? It's a big job. So we're going to need some rubbish grabbers How can you find the best grabber for the job? So we come over here and we can go to stage two So we engage the students in that sort of discussion then we get to this build step here, okay? And um, hopefully the kids are enthusiastic about trying to build something. And you come in here and you click on that and you get these instructions here on how to build. Now, Lego have broken that up so that different, you know, if you've got a, a couple of kids working on it, they can each have a go at building, say, the, you know, the first grabber and the second grabber and those instructions are, are separated and the kids can both build it and then one of them can have a go at the at building the controller. So if we jump into one of these instructions, so let's uh, jump into this one, this grabber two, you come along here and it explains for you up here in the instructions, what you're trying to build. This is the mechanism we're building in this section. And down here, it's got what pieces you need for step one, okay? And you can see here, there's very clear instructions on how to put it together, which pins it goes into, that sort of thing. And it clicks through. So you can see someone, you know, the students can start building this as they go, okay? And now, so rather than have me sit here and build it in front of you, I'll just race through this. Okay, and the steps you can see, and we get to the end and it tells us even what ports to connect the different parts into. So that would be connecting up the motor into port A and connecting up the pressure or the force sensor into port E. So, and therefore once that's done, we can put those two together. So if we built the controller, grab a one, grab a two, we've then got ourselves a little designed a, a core. Um, now I'll just jump to a video I've prepared earlier. So I'll just put the focus on that. So, so here's one I prepared earlier and we'll just play that video. Hopefully it works better. So you can see here, we've got the gripper. Now you can see I've attached on one of the attachments and I've got these items here, which appear as sort of rubbish that I could be picking up. So if I come along, grab the gripper, it's on and start the program. Okay, 
And you can see as I press the button and release, you've got the ability to pick things up. So this is one of the grippers, and here's the second one okay, that we can test. And students can build their own later on as well and design a better one. So we come along and we can test on picking up objects of different size and weight, and there's two different tests you can do. And so I might pick this up. You can see it did a pretty good job of picking up that brick, and we can place it in the rubbish bin. Come along, grab the green one again. Very easy to pick up. Pick up the paper. What do you know? Put it in the bin, and there it is. Oh, and then we find a little uh, lint ball wrapper that I've obviously eaten, which we want to keep secret from my partner, so we'll clean that up and make sure she doesn't realise I'm the one who's eaten all the lint chocolates. Pop it in the rubbish bin. Now, if we go to pick up this particular set of uh, wheels, it's very difficult, isn't so effective at picking it up. The apple, no good. Okay, so if we put our rubbish out again and swap over, and you can see with this particular model, just unhook it, pull it out, and you can attach on another set of claws really easily. I just plug in there, and away you go, and they're working straight away. That's, you know, it's a clever little model, the way they've designed it, which you can attach on different uh, claws and things. So when we go to pick up this time around, I'll try and pick up the piece of paper first. It does a reasonable job. It's not too bad. Try to pick up the little wrapper. It's, it's not so good at picking that up, and you can see that in the test. Try to pick up these bits of Lego. Not much chop. However, if we try to pick up these wheels, you can see it does quite a good job with that sort of the, the sort of finger claw style that it's got. And it can pick up those, and you can see the students can test different types of claws. So you know, say this apple, yep, it can pick it up. Okay, you can see there, and you know, it does a pretty good job of picking up that sort of heavier. Certainly, it's a lot better than the other claw design. Okay, we pop that in the rubbish bin. Okay, and you can see. Again, no, oh, it's possible to get the paper, and we'll hide that. Okay, so that's an example of the, the gripper. The kids can obviously create better and improve these designs, and that's part of what they'd be expected to do. Okay, so to switch it off, just hold that down, and that closes it down. Okay. So you can see there with that, um, that little example that, of um, the activity, as you go through the tutorial, you can see I, I showed you it lifting, but there's activities here where the students would need to you know, gather the rubbish to test, okay? And then they can come in here where it's step four of eight, play this program. So it gives them an initial program. It's not using any of the feedback from the pressure sensor. So there's the ability there for them to program it so that the, um, the I, I guess the, the tightness of the, the, or the level to which the claw closes could be controlled via the pressure sensor, that sort of thing. So from a programming perspective, there's bits where you can extend beyond the basic um, unit of work that's here. Then we, jump to step five and this is where we begin testing the testing phase if you like test one is testing your know, object size how effective is it at picking up small objects or large objects and if we jump into um, test two um, where how, how effective are the two different claws that we're testing on picking up heavy objects or light objects that sort of thing and you, you can refer back to the video and see roughly how it goes okay and then there's also the ability for the students themselves to modify and obviously create better, more improved claws. Okay, and so at the end they have to you know come up with a conclusion and they're asking those questions: which one's better for picking up small objects, which one's better for heavy objects, that sort of thing. And the last step might be you know asking that the students go and um, you know create a video that explains their work or how they submit their work to you, that sort of thing. So. That's a, a basic walkthrough of the tutorials. As I said, it starts back there at um, you know, the first one. Starts with that sort of video, okay? Then you get you know, a video to try and engage the students. Then you've got the building instructions. Then you've got the coding. Then you've got the activity. So it's a, it's a really great walkthrough that um, supports teachers in their, with their work. Okay, so the next thing I might do is jump back 
to, if I jump back to the unit plans themselves, and we'll go to some of the online resources that are available. So this is stuff that's all built into the software. And then you can also go online. So say for Invention Squad, I come in here to Teacher Resources. Okay. And I can click on that and go to more information online here. So it'll then ask me if I'm a teacher or a pupil, jump in as a teacher. Okay. And I'll just pull up that screen, show you. That's appeared. Give me a second. And and here it is, it's pop. Yep, you should be able to see it. So this is clicking, if I click on the software, this is what, where it links me to. Now, at the moment, it's taken me to their software. It's sort of, there's versions of it all around the world. At the moment, it's taking me to the Great Britain site. You can see their GB in the things. We've um, sent off and had confirmation from Lego that they'll be changing that. Uh, you click on that, okay, and you come to the, AU version of the software. It's exactly the same, just with some different sort of curriculum links, that sort of thing. So we come in here to the Invention Squad um, webpage, and you've got things like Super Cleanup here. So this was the unit of work. Double click into it. And it opens up. Okay. And now we've got uh, there's a, a lot more information in here and a few extra things. So there's a little guide along the top there. It tells you, you know, Ignited Discuss but we'll just scroll down through it. And remember I was talking about the five E's that Lego you know, design their lesson plans around. The first one, okay, so there's the preparation point. Then we've got the engage, where you're trying to engage the students and get involved in a discussion. You played a little video that we played earlier. Um, and then we've got where this, and, um, and then we've got explain. And there's a, you know, a little guide there that you can have a look through that tells you how to sort of structure the lesson. Okay, have the explain, elaborate and evaluate. Okay, so there's sort of an outline of what they'll be doing in each section. Then if we jump over here, we've also got these teacher sources. Okay, and if you remember in the video, they were using some sheets of paper. So there's um, test tables. So I'll jump to that. Okay, and as soon as it pops up, you'll see here, there's the two different quarter it picks up or not and give it a rating of how effective they are at picking it up, whether that's a, you know, one being it was very effective, zero being it wasn't, you know, or, or, or you know, very occasional or negative one being it wasn't very good at all. And you can sort of wait and go through and fill those tables. You can have a look at that after and um, you know, there's various objects you might pick up and test. So one whether you're testing weight and one whether you're testing um, size, that sort of thing. So if I jump back to where we were, so there's these sort of resources here and it fleshes, there's some extra builders in there Okay, designed to grab common objects. So you can see here, there's some coding tips. Okay, and then they've got down here, we're, we're at the differentiation section where there's ways that um, Lego suggest project, whether you're trying to make it simpler for younger students or, you know, or, or more complex in that sense. There's also some assessment um, you know, suggestions or opportunities. S see here for teacher observation checklist. You could also have all the different units. There's these sort of, um, this is sort of the structure you'll find in the online resources for each lesson. And then they've got where it can link into the language arts extension or a maths extension. And also, this is a, an interesting little area which um, Lego have put together, which is about career links. So people who enjoyed um, this process, either the designing of the core or the cleaning up, it's got some um, career links that just to sort of, um, I suppose, make kids aware of what will be able to um, may enjoy working, that sort of thing down the track. So, so that's, a, a, a basic rundown of the teacher supports, you know, the, the, the extra support that's online there that moves outside the software. And you can have a look at that in your own time and, and go through various, um, um, various lessons for each of the different units. Jump to the PowerPoint. So, okay, and we're nearly finished up. Okay, and so, all right, there we go. So you can see the unit plans all broken up. And in terms of um, lesson plans and curriculum links, you can see that the, the Spike Prime, for, in terms of linking it specifically to the New Zealand curriculum, um, it'll seamlessly integrate into, uh, an activity like that would seamlessly integrate into the curriculum inquiry topics. So for example, so sustainability and space, space with respect to um, things like cleaning up waterways, that sort of thing. Then, I'm sorry, I'm conscious of the time, so I'll, I'll, we'll speak through it. And those who want to stay on can for the question time. Um, we've also got then, you know, where, where the activities link into the digital curriculum links 
So things like computational, say, say something like the super cleanup for computational thinking and, and digital technologies. So where the students get to you know, tinker and create and debug things and, and perseverance, those sort of things. All those things are incorporated into those units and um, you know, are really good for the students to develop their confidence. So now I'll play you a very short little um, video, which is just a, um, oh, for privacy reasons. Um, and so, uh, you, but you'll get a sense of that. Just one, two, three, four. Oh. Okay, and so, yeah, the, the audio on it might be particularly good, and, and the video is obviously a bit pixelated, but the idea there is just to show you, um, you know, that's a bunch of earlier, and you can see there that they're, you know, the teachers are there, they're all on their hands and knees playing around, really engaged, and when we spoke about what it means where you learn through play, I think that's a great example of it, and it's just done in one of the face-to-face -face workshops that we um, ran, obviously, we would be running now if it weren't for uh, COVID-19, but um, anyway, you can see in that, the, the, the teachers there are, you know, they're joyful, they're having fun. You know, the activity is meaningful, they're, they're, they're engaged in it, and it's iterative. It's one of those activities where they go back and try different ideas and copy other people's ideas and integrate that in and see if they can make the best hopper possible, and it's clearly socially interactive, okay? And I think it's just a great example of a really um, simple unit, if you like, that really ticks off that sort of developing teacher's confidence, that sort of thing, and, and students' confidence, okay? So we'll jump into, we're now at um, questions and, and to let you know that there has been, um, modern teaching aids have done a, a drop. I guess the reason I bring that up is modern teaching aids have done a, a drop in their pricing at the moment. And so um, it's, 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 that's great and making it more affordable. Um, you can get more information, obviously, if you're interested at teaching.co.nz um, forward slash spike prime. And for those who are interested in getting a hands-on demonstration or a quote, um, you can get in contact with your school's local rep if you're not sure who your local rep is, you can send me an email. My email address is there and I'll put you in touch with it. So we might then jump on and see if there are any questions. Okay, I'll just unmute a couple of my colleagues. So, so I'm bringing Chris online and we'll bring Hope on and just see if there are any questions. Chris, are you there? Uh, yeah, there's, um, I think the big question, James, is did your partner find out whether you'd eaten the chocolates or not? <laughs> uh, yeah, she probably worked that out by the fact that I've, uh, you know, put on a few kilograms in during isolation. <laughs> so, yes. Um, no, there, there hasn't been any questions. It's okay. quite a silent group. Okay. Um, I suppose if there are any questions, now's a good time. To, um, to type in and ask them. Um, Hope, I'm trying to unmute you and having more trouble than I should. I have two young children that are very loud in the background. So if there's any questions around the New Zealand curriculum, I'll unmute myself so you don't all have to hear Blippi in the background. <laughs> That's all right, we understand you know, isolation. We're all in that sort of similar boat. So um, I'll just bring up the chat function myself. Okay. So. Oh, now, to bring up the one question, um, anyone thinks, yep, so this, you can see where to download the software, you just, you can, to download the software, one of the easy ones is just to go to, um, Google and type in Lego Education. Make sure you add the education because there's two different companies, if you like. Lego Education Downloads, and you'll get all the downloads for software and it really opens up things there. Um, to, yep, so you've got my email address there in the chat function. Um, and then someone's asked me privately, how did you find the sound library? To, in the software, for the, I'll just jump into that quickly, just in case. Um, so let me share that screen for, with you for a moment. So to go to the sound library, so here. So if I go back, 
So anywhere in here. So if I jump into a, we'll just start up a new project. Okay. And in sound library, you come in here, as soon as I drag out, start a sound, I can just click there on options or add a sound. So I've brought out one of the sound blocks and add a sound. I'm not sure, it's probably quite loud. My apologies if it is. But different sounds. You get all the different sounds as you hover over them and you can click on the editor and drag one in there and record your own sounds, that sort of thing. And they, all those sounds play on the computer that's connected to the, um, to the, to the robot. Okay. So, um, now we've only got a small group left. What we might do is I'll allow you to, just in case you can't be bothered typing, is I'll allow you to unmute yourselves and you can ask a question. And um, yeah, it might be, some people might prefer to do that that way. So if anyone's got a question, you should now be able to unmute yourself and you can just ask a question if you'd like, or you can, yeah. Hi, it's Fiona here. Oh, hi, Fiona. Um, I use the EV3s. Mm -hmm. Are the um, sensors from the EV3s compatible with the spike system? No, no, they're, they're not. There's a different um, connection, um, different sort of cables to connect in, that sort of thing. Uh, I couldn't see uh, that. From you. It yeah. looked similar. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully that gives you an idea. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions out there? Yeah, hey, yeah. Um, I just have a question. So, look, me and myself and one of the other TJs in the uh, Zoom at the moment, we've not used, or at least I've not used anything like this before, and nor the other programs that you're talking about either. So, is it still um, easy to kind of pick up? Because it seems a little bit difficult, kind of going it over over this, like a little bit. Um, Kind of hard to pick up, but I think obviously if I had it, it would be a bit easier. But it's... absolutely, I guess we've just compacted this down into sort of a one-hour presentation, and we're just mm -hmm. trying to get you through so you can see all that it's you know, or, or or just open up the doors if you like to what's possible with it. And um, uh, you know, in terms of the ease of use, absolutely, I think it's probably one of their easier. Um, robotics platforms, if you like, to, to, to start with. Um, if you're starting with younger kids, it's certainly easier to get going with than the EV3. And, um, and it's a great platform and it's got, but it ex probably extends a bit further than the Spike Prime. So you'll find um, you'd use EV3 up to say, you know, potentially up to year 12, that sort of thing. And I know, um, say, the UN, at U at U University of New South Wales in Australia, they run, they, they, they work with the EV3s in the first year of their mechatronics course. So it really does scale well. This one um, fits around that grade five to eight and people will, some people will, teachers can see that they can use it in younger years and some people can see that they can use it in older years, but it's certainly an easy platform to work with. Yeah, there's a really good guide there in terms of um, that sort of, in that start section where there's great guides for just how to start, you know, really simple, just programming the brick and plugging it in and making it work. So it is a really good guide. And the software um, programming with um, Scratch, that sort of stacking, stacks of code, is a very easy way to um, um, code as well. And it's similar to a lot of other platforms. So yeah, I, I would think it is a really easy um, platform to start with. So thank you for the question. Uh, anyone else? Okay, if we don't have any other questions, we can probably uh, finish it up. I hope you um, enjoyed it. Oh, wait a minute, there is someone. Um, the colour sensor. Oh, okay, so, yep, we've got Chris answering questions online. Okay, Chris, if that's okay. All right, I think that's it. So, or, or last chance.
speak now, forever hold your peace. Um, yeah, if anyone jump in, I'll give you 10 or 15 seconds. Otherwise, we might finish up the call. Thank you very much, everyone, for your time. And um, as I said, if you need any support or help, you know, get in contact either with your rep, if you know who they are, or if you're not sure, get in contact, you know, send me an email and I'll put you in touch with, with them. So on that basis, I think we'll finish it up. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Fiona. Cheers.